morning, and welcome to New Hour Spoilers. I am Adam. It is February 16th, 2023, the day that Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania finally is theaters. I am, you know, it's, it's, it's new comic book movie release day, so I got that, that's bringing my stuff, the excitement, the, you know, all of that. I, I saw the reviews haven't been great, but you know what? Let's see and render judgment for myself. I'm, I'm interested to see what this movie does. Um, it is an unseasonably warm 65 degrees. And I did not look at the temperature before I got dressed today to go to work. Because I figured, it's February, so why the fuck would it be almost 70 degrees? Uh, yet here we are. Wearing jeans. When I should have just worn shorts. Um, but presumably, the temperature will only go up from here. Yeah, 60 degrees. What the fuck? Um, but, uh, yeah, we're here to talk about The Bad Batch, episode 9, um, which was, uh, that was annoying. Only, how did only three cars get through? Um, so, last episode, we didn't really address it last time, because in the last episode when we talked about it, I was more focused on the more macro information that was exposited about the Empire as a result of, um, the developments about the, the end of the cloning program and the start of the conscripted army, because I, I'm very interested in that kind of stuff, the, the geopolitics on a galactic level that go into running the galaxy, um, as the Emperor, I'm, I'm very interested in all of that, um, so, watching, um, what's it called, watching, uh, um, watching that episode, I, like, the fact that Echo left wasn't exactly something that was top of my radar, like, top of my list of things to talk about, because it's like, I'm not, like, for me, my least favorite part of the Bad Batch is the actual team. Um, I like how the team interacts with, um, with Alpha, or Omega, I like, um, you know, I like all of that, but I... Beyond that, I'm not exactly super, super stoked on the team. Like, like as characters, I, I, I can buy into all of the action and, and all of the things that they come from as they're traveling the galaxy and, and and being kind of the saviors as they go through. I can buy all of that and I can I can accept all of that and I, I, I appreciate it. It's just for me, what the team does and, and the composition of the team is the least important part. Um... So I think that like when when Echo left, it was kind of something that's like this is within the confines of this show's narrative, a major moment. But for what I'm looking at the show for, which is its wider implications across the the Star Wars universe, it's at the end of the day not as important. I think really what it does is it sets up what's going to happen with this team by the end of whenever this show ends, be at the end of this season or at the end of next season, um, which is the team is going to slowly dissolve and break up where, you know, they're going to go off and, and, and do what they can elsewhere to to save, you know, to help fight the Empire. Um, and I think that's kind of the best way to handle it, um, if we're being, you know, completely honest with, with ourselves about what they should be doing with this show. Um, at the end of the day, if that is where, you know, if that's what the show is, is going towards, is the, the eventual breakup of the team that I'm fine with that. I think a lot of that would work. Uh, I just don't know if this show is necessarily getting, you know, getting to that point in the So, I think what I liked about this episode, though, was giving Omega the opportunity to really have to grapple with this new reality, because they haven't had a member of the team leave beside Crosshair, and Crosshair was very different circumstances. Um, Echo went willingly, and it was Echo's idea. Um... But Crosshair, you know, Crosshair, it was also his idea, but he turned on the team. So it's easier to write him off and be like, oh, well, why? So here we have Echo, who has only ever known the camaraderie that that they have now, and is like, well, why the fuck would you let them leave? Why would, why would you let them leave? We don't need him to leave. Like, we could, he could, you know, he could have stayed with us. Why didn't you make him stay? 
and then forcing her to grapple with that and, and, and process these complex emotions is a great way to use to use that character and I think that it's, it's kind of the thing where it's like it is this show is doing a lot of the narrative groundwork to establish the early empire the immediate aftermath of the fall of the republic and I think that taking these grounded character moments and putting them in um, will make it so that way the show isn't just a history lesson or a, a, a an exposition machine. It is, you know, we, we do have characters here and characters that we care about, characters that we want to, you know, to see succeed or be happy or any number of other ways you want to, you know, or other platitudes you want to put about how we want to see these characters function within this world. And I think that's actually a great way to, you know, to do that is to have them, you know, have to grapple with the situation, um, and, and actually deal with it, um, and I think that the thing is, too, it's like having it be so different from when Crosshair left is such a great choice, because it's like, or, or it's also like not the death, like, Having it be, he's going to leave on his own and having to have the team really grapple with the fact that, look, our fight is kind of changing, war is evolving, and what we have to do, our role in this is evolving as well. Like, having the team grapple with that, like, is a great way to have, to be, like, they are avatars for the galaxy and the rebellion and any number of other organizations that are, are within the Star Wars universe, where it's this idea that everything is changing. If everything is changing, we need to change too. Um, and, and as clones, they're not really built for change. They're built for following instructions and doing what they're told. Um, and I think that you, what you have here is a great opportunity to really showcase that and make it into a, uh, a what's it called? A, a bigger, you know, a, a bigger exposition. Oh, fuck me, they put this light back. Um, they have these stupid lights they put on the on-ramps the, to the highway, and uh, one of them got taken out by a, uh, I would assume a car accident of some kind, because um, there was like not, nothing left, and it was laying there on the side, so or someone vandalized it, but they they already put it back, and I'm like, what the fuck, because it was so nice, for like a week we didn't have to worry about this fucking traffic light directing when you can't get off the highway, causing a traffic jam getting onto the highway. Um, but yeah, um, look, if we, if we look at this show for what it is, I mean, it's doing a good job, it's, it's, it is, it is a more, I, I would say it's, it's taking the best parts of the Clone Wars and putting them into a slightly different lens, which I think really does service the plot of the show, and also the overarching, this is what's happening in Star Wars kind of thing at the same time, um, I think that I'll that all works kind of well together. It's interesting to see this show go the way it is. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think that just about wraps it up. Um, so, The Bad Batch is currently on Disney+. Plus. This is a short episode because these episodes are only a half hour long, and I don't really want to get into deep spoilers on any of the episodes. Um, and also, it's like, for, for me, it's like the minutia of what's happening in the episode is less important than... I mean, granted, we, like, two weeks ago we got into it about how dumb the minutia of the episode was in the one on Kashyyyk. But in this one, it's like the idea that the minutia of the episode is less important um, than what's actually getting done is, is interesting. Because it's like, oh, it's another stranded episode. We've done this a million times before on here on Rebels, on the Clone Wars, we've done this a million times, team gets stranded, team is stuck, team needs to figure out a way to get off the planet, hijinks ensue, and I think that it works well here, I think that it all kind of, you know, tracks for what one would expect from a, a, a show, from a, from, from this show, but at the same time, I think it'd be interesting to see it kind of, uh, you know, like, I, I, I don't know, I wouldn't change anything, really, I think it's doing a pretty good job of, of what it's doing, it's not like, you know, we're missing a key character moment, or a key emotional arc, I kind of want to see more of Cody, though, 
that Cody story, I want to see come back and possibly play a role in the finale. I don't want to see Cody just go to the wayside um, because that would be a disappointment, I think. If we got to the end of this, Cody was just kind of, for lack of a better word, shafted. Because um, I want to see, I, like, I think I said it when the Cody episode aired, I, I want to see Cody have to grapple with what he thinks he did. Because um, I think that would be a unique thing to have to watch a clone process. Um, I think it would be like that's 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 the key thing here is that we we haven't seen a clone have to come to terms with the fact that they killed one of their friends, um, or a general, or someone like that, you know, and then have like a clone who was involved in 66, thought that they killed the Jedi that they were there to kill, um, like, I, 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 I don't think we've really seen that in, in this, you know, in this series ever, like, I think that would be an interesting thing to have to explore and have him deal with, um, is the idea of, oh god, what have I done, um, and it's not even what have I done in, in the case of, like, I, you know, like, I personally did this out of malice or out of a, a passion in a moment or something like that. It's what have I done? I, I, I was not in control. I was a passenger on this. Like, that kind of thing would be a cool thing to watch the clones process. Um, I think another thing that could be cool is you know, this show could build towards a rebellion of the clones that gets shut down. Like, that would be another idea that would be pretty cool, I think, is if, if, if the surviving clones started banding together and they went into an army to try and take on the Empire, I would buy that. I would, I would buy that. Um, but also what I would like, and again, we're getting, we're getting a little off topic here, because I feel like I'm stretching it out, but I'm, I, you know, it's just something I thought about. I'd like to see a, a show about the Rise of the Inquisitors. That'd be a cool show, I think. Um, but yeah, I think that that would be it. Like, there's a lot of room for expanding the universe and, and talking about what is and isn't, you know, applicable to this new, to the new canon, I think that that's something that I would like to see. I think, you know, with, with, with Obi-Wan possibly getting a second season, you know, maybe that's where this is going. Maybe we have Obi-Wan, the, all these years earlier, kind of becoming the, what's it called, you know, the, the symbol of, I mean, look, I, I don't think you can really do that, but maybe you can do Obi-Wan as, you know, leading the, uh, a clone army of the remaining clones. Like, that would be cool. Um, I'm psyching myself up for something that's not gonna happen, aren't I? Yeah, we're not gonna get that. Anyway, I think we'll wrap up there for today. Uh, so, tonight, we have Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, a movie I'm very much looking forward to. I want to see my boy Kang, uh, curb stomp Scott Lang, which I have a feeling will happen in this movie. Um, we will, you know, we will see how this plays out, but, you know, hopefully it's, you know, better, you know, than, than the reviews indicate. I have a feeling this could be a, like, Marvel's Batman v Superman, where it's like, I don't think this movie's gonna be worse inherently than, um, like, what's it called? I don't think this movie's gonna be worse than, um, what was that other movie? Uh, Thor The Dark World, or Incredible Hulk, or Iron Man 2, or anything like that. Uh, but I do think the movie will be, you know, not the best, but I think it'll be better than the reviews indicate, which is kind of the issue that I had with, you know, when we saw Batman v Superman, I think, you know, Peter and I both, we were ready to go into that movie and be like, oh my god, this is the worst superhero movie I've ever seen. Uh, and then when we came out, it's just kind of not great, it kind of was the indicator, you know, maybe Rotten Tomatoes' system is not the best, uh, but... You know, 51% positive is not great. That's what I, last I saw, 51% positive. But we'll see. We'll see how it actually is. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what that is. Uh, and that episode will go up tonight. Um, 
yeah, Quantumania tonight. Um, I gotta look at what else there is to watch because there's The Last of Us um, on Monday. And then, oh, this weekend we're also doing the short showcases. The, uh, the Oscar nominated live action and animated shorts this weekend as well. So get ready for that. That'll be Saturday and Sunday, um, respectively. I don't know what days and time, what, what times, which one's which, and which time is which, exactly the top of my head. Um, but they'll be up on those days. So until our next episode, which will be uh, Quantumania tonight, have a great rest of your week.